It's a case that jurors have struggled with three times now, and this week another mistrial was declared in the case of People versus Corbin White, with a murder charge still unanswered. Our Tamara Lindstrom sat down for an exclusive interview with one of those jurors, and he explains why this latest jury couldn't deliver a verdict. Nearly three years after Paul Garcia is shot dead in an Ithaca parking lot on a freezing December night, the case against Corbin White is handed to a jury for a third time. Those people in that jury room worked very hard. All of us did. White was charged with second-degree murder, robbery, attempted robbery, and tampering with physical evidence for his alleged role in the shooting. A crime prosecutors say was payback for a tarnished reputation. The defense says the evidence doesn't prove White's involvement. There was no, uh, as you might call it, smoking gun in this case. There was um, one eyewitness to the crime that actually could identify the victim. So, I mean, it was, it was a little tough. It was a lot of circumstantial evidence. Fortner says initially the jury leaned toward not guilty. For five days they sifted through evidence, making timelines and reviewing testimony until a clearer picture began to emerge. As soon as we did, votes began to change um, and, and it started going more towards guilty. Some of the most powerful evidence, he says, were cell phone records and a recording of a jailhouse call between White and his girlfriend. That had a huge effect. That jailhouse phone call, was I mean, he, he basically admitted he was guilty on it, uh, that phone call. The jury quickly agreed to acquit on the robbery charge and voted guilty on tampering with physical evidence. No one saw any tangible evidence of anything actually being taken. However, the eyewitness did say that he saw him reaching into the pocket. So we went next to the attempted robbery charge, and that's where we got hung. By Friday, the jury announced they were at an impasse, but kept working to come up with a consensus. Finally, five days later, the jury was hopelessly deadlocked, forcing the judge to accept a partial verdict and declaring yet another mistrial on that murder charge. There was still one person who, no matter what you put up there, he wasn't going to vote guilty. And it was really obvious because he would say things like, well, if you can show me this and we'd show him, oh, that's not good enough, you know. Um, if you can prove this, and then we'd prove it, and that wasn't good enough. Fortner says while he didn't agree with the outcome, he believes the system worked, and he hopes to see a fourth trial on that murder charge. This thing needs to see an end. It really does need to see an end. Um, in my opinion, there's a killer that's going to be walking the streets of Ithaca again very soon. In Ithaca, Tamara Lindstrom, YNN. The district attorney's office does plan to go forward with a fourth trial. Assistant District Attorney Andrew McElwee said that prosecutors are grateful for the work of all the jurors.